information and real strategies for successful living. I'm Terry A. O'Neill. I'm John L. Brown. And I'm T.D. Trice. Welcome to today's program. It's All Inside. That is the title of a book written by our guest today, Dr. Kendrick Scott. He's an author, speaker, and life coach. His highly acclaimed self-help book is titled It's All Inside, How to Discover that everything you need is within your reach. In his book, he challenges individuals to not only be the best that they can be, but to be more than they, than they can be. And he speaks to audiences on personal development, motivation, and also self-help. He holds a doctor's, uh, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from Florida State University and a PhD in organizational leadership. Welcome to today's program, Dr. Scott. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you've traveled a long way from Florida to be here today. <laughs> what brings you to Sacramento? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. What brings me to Sacramento is um, a track and field meet. My son participate in the United States track and field. He's participating in the United States track and field championships, and he's one of the top discus throwers and um, shot putters in the nation. So oh he's discus coming Discus and <laughs> shot put. Discus wow. and shot put. Wow, that is impressive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's, what, what's, a, what's a personal best you think for him? Personal best in the shot put, I think it's around 37 10 at the moment, and a personal wow, best in the discus amazing. is around 103, 104. Wow, so, that is awesome. Yes, yes, yes. So we traveled out here to have him compete against other athletes, mm -hmm. some of the top athletes in the country. That's right. And um, so we're out here competing this week, and he's already won a medal um, in a shot put. So <laughs> he's doing it big do over here. Yeah. All the yes. way from Florida. Well, yes. awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is great stuff. All right. You know, uh, uh, you're a life coach. Yes, sir. All right. You know, what would, you know, how you started the journey of being a life coach? Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, you, I sort of fell into being a life coach. You know, I didn't, I didn't start out on my journey saying, I want to be a life coach. What happens is you have challenges in your life, and we all have challenges. And right, right. we have things that um, we have to overcome. And so um, through a lot of challenges and a lot of the things that, I, that I've overcome, that I overcame in my life, I found people started to ask me questions about how do you persevere? How do you get through that problem? Mm -hmm. How do you do this? And what are some of the steps that you can take? And so from that, and I was giving out a lot of free advice, <laughs> and I realized that people will pay you to do that. So, oh, <laughs> so yeah, I sort of yeah. fell into that role. And, and not only about getting paid, but it's also about helping people. Right. I like to see right. the light bulb come on in people's oh, eyes. Right. I like to see when they get up off the proverbial mat mm -hmm. that yeah. life has knocked them down and now you can get up. Mm -hmm. And if I can say something, mm -hmm. whether I pay you or not, we all giving out advice, mm -hmm. or whether I'm paid or not, I'm, I will do that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I fell into being this thing that we call life coaches. Right. Mm -hmm. And also you're a motivational speaker. Yes, yes, sir. Motivational speaking. So it started actually being a, a speaker at first. So when I was about 13 years old, mm -hmm. my dad was in the NAACP and he had me come out to an event. And he said, I want you to get up on stage and speak. Well, I was scared. I was petrified. Mm -hmm. But um, I used to listen to a lot of um, Dr. Martin Luther King tapes, mm -hmm. his old tapes and speeches. And I was always mesmerized by how he could move a crowd. Yeah. And, wow. and yeah. Before I knew it, I had memorized a lot of his speeches. And when I got on stage that night, I just started saying stuff. Wow. Like Martin mm -hmm. Luther King's speeches, I started reciting mm -hmm. things yeah, that yeah. I still remember to this day. And from there, people started to ask me to speak and I mm -hmm. started to do other speaking and I kind of you know, parlayed that role into doing motivational speaking. And I heard people like Les Brown, of course, mm -hmm. and we all know right. Les Brown, yeah. and mm -hmm. Zig Ziglar, and Tony yeah, Robbins, right. and Wayne yeah. Dyer, and so I sort of got into, got involved, and that's kind of sort of how I started to, be becoming a, to, to become a motivational speaker. 
Yeah. Now, was this natural for you? It was just a natural feeling? You kind of fell into it? Did you feel comfortable with giving the advice that you were giving? Because how long have you, did you start the life coaching when you got your PhD or did you start prior to that? Like when did you start? How long have you been doing this? So I started the life coaching prior to getting the PhD. Mm -hmm. And you know, my, my journey to getting the PhD, I wanted to go back and study. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know the science behind some of the things that I was saying to people. And I wanted to not only just give the lay, um, this lay information that we all know, mm -hmm. I wanted to know the science behind psychology. What mm -hmm. makes people but, move? Yeah. What yeah. makes people, um, some people, you know, you'll have people who grow up in the same house, mm -hmm. have the same experiences, mm -hmm. and one person uh, uh, not do so well in life, mm -hmm. and one person will go off and do well. So what makes people move? How does that happen? How do we do that? You know, so I wanted to know the science behind it. So that's my journey into started to studying the, the literature on in, the, in organizational leadership literature. So, uh, yeah. Life coach. Now, a lot of people, you know, they heard the term life coach. Yes, sir. Okay, but they don't really know what a life coach does. Mm -hmm. right. Explain it, you know. So what a life coach does is a life coach helps people to um, move from whatever place they're in in life. Say, let's say that you are a person, maybe you are depressed. You know, I, don't, I have this um, saying that I don't think people, we are, people are not lazy in a sense. Um, people don't have um, issues that make them unsuccessful. I think that things happen to people at times. Maybe there's a death in the family. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, you lose your job. Mm -hmm. Maybe you get divorced. Mm -hmm. And then some people can't rebound from those mm -hmm. instances in life. That is so true. So wow. sometimes yeah. you need people to help you to rebound. Mm -hmm. And what I found, and back to your first question, me sharing my story, my own personal journey, helps people to say, you know, if he can do that, I can do that. You know, mm. and life coaching comes from this, 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 this idea that the life coach sort of helps you to make these steps, you know, sort of lay these steps out. It's almost like in, Michael Jordan has a coach. Right. And he has people to help him, even though he has the skills, mm -hmm. he has someone to help him at the time when he played. Now it's LeBron James, of course, and mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, and other people in basketball, if we look using the basketball analogy or sports analogy, but. Mm -hmm. That you, just because you have the skills does not mean that you can't be coached. Mm, you right. know, and that's, so, that, so that's what life coaching is. So it could be in personal finances. It can be in your mental health. You know, we have an issue with mental health today. So oh, life coaches so help true. people with many different things in life. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is to help you get from one place to the next, that's what life coaches you know, do. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of uh, people that run in large corporations, mm -hmm. you know, they seek counseling, sure. especially if they're, they're in management. Sure. Is that part of life coaching? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, that's something we can consider life coaching. Life coaching, sort of what I do is more about um, personal life coaching. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of organizations, and now it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that, and what I've studied in my PhD with my, with my doctoral training in that I studied organizational leadership. Right. So organizations, so I've studied decide what I can help people personally and also help organizations as well. Right. Because a lot of what we see now, especially in business, mm -hmm. we see a lot of organizations have an issue with people. Right. And my discipline is leadership. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, the businesses sort of shied away from studying people. But as you see now that your people are your most important asset that's in the organization. Right. That's it's right. the human capital that's the most important. Mm -hmm. So we talk about financial capital and we talk about the other parts of the businesses where we talk about strategy and I talk about strategy when I teach strategy, but the people are the most important part because what, without the people, the organization goes, doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't go anywhere. So, we're, so, so in life coaching, we sort of help people and then we can also coach the, organ I can also coach the organization as well. Right, yeah, because so you're, I, okay, go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, because uh, at one time a lot of uh, large or organizations like supervisors, they were sure. kind of like tyrant. You know, you, you do this, you do that, you do that. But uh, now they kind of like shied away from that because they have, they was, like you say, because of the life coaching, you know, is teaching them about different people. 
you know, yes. different cultures, you know, and things of that nature. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, and we see that a lot, too. We see a lot of the, the top-down organizations, you know, uh -huh. when before, before, you know, the 1920s, organizations were different. Yeah. You know, people would go to work, and you work eight hours a day. You had to be at your office. Now, our office, we have our office on our phones. It can be anywhere. It could be anywhere. And the technology is the new worker. Right. And and the people are the uh, are the are the the instigators of making that technology move now. So it's 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 interesting that you mentioned how they they how they like you you were saying like in the 1920s is very different mm -hmm. from the way that it is True. now. Right, right. But there's still a lot of companies that are stuck in the past. Absolutely. Well, a lot of a lot of companies are they still under that old model. You know, of being tar tyrant. Yes. You know, but since they got programs now, they sending supervisors and managers to school for sensitive awareness. A lot of and different a, sensitive awarenesses. Right. They do have a sensitive. <laughs> yeah, they have uh, uh, because I was a supervisor at one time at mm -hmm. the postal service, mm -hmm. and you know, postal service deal uh, with multicultural people. You know, you got different people, and we had to go to the class and the class taught us about the culture mm. of the different people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because the post office was one of them was tyrant supervisors, but they stopped that model mm -hmm. because it was you ever heard of those saying, I'll go postal on you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they had to stop it. Mm -hmm. sure. There was too many people, you know, Absolutely. stressing out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they said the sensitive awareness. And sensitive awareness is is not like what you do, you know, life coach, but it's kind of like similar, but they mm -hmm. talk more about different right. people. Training. Right, training. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we do that too, the sensitivity, awareness, training, oh, okay. diversity, training, right. all okay. of that, all okay. of that sort of, all of that is part of the organization. Okay. And so when, when we study business management, which is my discipline, you know, finance is really four different um, sectors of it, finance and accounting, finance and accounting is management and marketing. So my discipline on the management, we started the, the organization as a whole. So if people need sensitivity training, mm -hmm. they need diversity training. Diversity right. is huge now. Mm -hmm. And cultural awareness, awareness training, mm -hmm. you know, training about different ethnicities. But what we're finding now too is the, that we're looking at generational differences. Yeah. Because a yeah, lot of times in the workforce now that we're finding that these generational differences is playing a huge role in how organizations how organizations behave, mm -hmm. and uh, so now the, the so, so how we're able to, you know, put this into you know what we study inside of our our, our business schools, it affects the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Before that, we didn't think so. Before mm -hmm. that, the literature was not there. That now the literature is there. So you will see, you know, these companies like recent companies, something will happen, and they'll have to change their model. They'll make a statement, or people will come off the board. We've seen that with Papa John's. We We've seen that with right. Uber. We've seen that with a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? We, you know, the way the information travels these days, yeah. we can be conduits, and you know, Instagram and Twitter, yeah. and before and you know it, these companies are. It is true. Now let me talk, let's talk about your book for a little bit. Okay. Does sure. that? Is that a part of this sure. as well? Is Absolutely. it part of your talk about your your book? So your book is entitled It's All Inside Discover That Everything You Need Is Within Your Reach. Is that part of your your training and your life coaching? Is that what inspired the book? Yes, well, yeah, and that's the sort of it, it that the title of the book, It's All Inside How to How to Discover Everything You Need Is Within Your Reach. So it comes from me looking at my life first. And you know, people. You know, sometimes there used to be an old adage that people say, you know, if I could be this person or if I could be that person. Mm -hmm. But what I challenge people to do is to think about: Have you ever said this to yourself? If mm -hmm. I had known then what I know now, right. have you ever said that yeah. to yourself? Uh, yes. Many so. times. Many times, right? <laughs> right. What if you, if you had known then what you know now? Mm -hmm. Hindsight right. is twenty twenty. But if if we all say that. And that's all true. I don't care what it is. It could be financial relationships. It could be, I mean, financial. It could be in relationships. It could be in anything. Mm -hmm. If we had known then what we know now, we would maybe be in a better place or we would right. do things right. different, right? Mm -hmm. So that led me to, to believe and know that everything that we have, everything that we need is within our reach. Mm -hmm. It's that we sometimes don't see those opportunities. Mm -hmm. right. So our charge should be 
how can we see opportunities now that we won't say that in the future? Because mm -hmm. today, we want, if we can see those opportunities today, then next year in 2020, we won't have to say, if I had known then what I know now. So that's right. sort of the attitude of the book. So are you saying that a lot of people are mentally blind? <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> blind. Mentally blind. Yeah, you, you can say, or, or just, or just. Sometimes we just don't see those opportunities. Just fail, right, we right, just right. fail to see yeah, them. But the opportunities that. were there, but we just failed to see those opportunities. Right. So, what we should be doing is trying to. Our, our hope is to try and see those opportunities. Right and what comes to mind is the opportunity that's there. There has to be a there has to be an energy within you that wants to pursue mm. that opportunity. Right. Not only mm. does the opportunity have to appear, right. but then you mm. have to take advantage of that opportunity. Right. Mm. And I, I'm 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 thinking about a, a subject I talked with with Mr. Mm. Brown earlier this week about whether or not uh, uh, this this friend of ours should write a book. And mm. I was thinking, well, get the get the book written. Go mm -hmm. just go and write the book because you have the energy to do it now. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And you don't want to turn back and look and say, oh man, I, I should have wrote it, it while then. I was right, in. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my, that was my take. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, there's the take that, you know, anything that you pursue is going to have effort. It's going to require effort after mm -hmm. you get it done. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you write the book, then you have to, if you want to, you have to then sell it, you have right. to market mm -hmm. it, you have right. to push it, you have to move it. Right. And that's Absolutely. a whole line of, mm -hmm. of, of work right. Right. Mm -hmm. behind right. that. Well, I don't think people really look at all the work that, mm -hmm. that it takes to actually mm -hmm. write a book and mm -hmm. get it published mm -hmm. and market it, sell it, all that, mm -hmm. you know, especially if they're doing it independently. I don't mm -hmm. think, you know, I think they just look at see the big sure. picture, you right. know, which is I got a book on sure. author, you right. know. But the details therein. Exactly. Oh my and everybody goodness. doesn't have the, the will. The I know will. you were saying that you don't believe that people are lazy, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, I didn't say I don't believe that all people are lazy, but it's that, it's that sometimes some people are, some people lazy. are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> some so of us, right. I've been lazy at times. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. right. I, I'm just saying, I, I just said that that's not Sometimes right. mm -hmm. you may look at someone that may not be the issue that sometimes right. we That's fall off right. the wagon. Right. Right. That right. Sometimes we do lose right. our spirit, right. we exactly. lose our will. Right. That exactly. something right. sometimes take. We're just not all bad people. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We have things that happen to exactly. us. That's right. Well, I, I right. think uh, uh, I understand exactly what you're saying because I have the same belief like what you're talking about mm. is that sometimes, you know, a person go through life. Mm -hmm and it could be hard for them, mm -hmm. and they lose focus. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I admire what you're doing, mm -hmm. life coach, of bringing them people back on track. Because there's, there's so many people in the communities right now today, mm -hmm. you know, that will benefit from you mm -hmm. as a person, as a mm -hmm. human being that cares, mm -hmm. you know, by being a life coach. They can benefit from that. They can get their lives back together. Mm -hmm. So what you doing, I applaud you. You preaching yeah. over here. He is <laughs> preaching yeah, a sermon a good, uh, right now. <laughs> okay. That's right. So so yeah, and 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 then that's that's and you you made a great point. You said something about the energy. Mm -hmm. So my next book is called The Inspired Life. Mm -hmm. Because wow. I think everything that we do, it, it comes from this inspiration. Mm -hmm. Just think about it sometimes. Sometimes when you're you you you're not feeling well and, and, and maybe the house needs to be clean and then all of a sudden you get this and you start cleaning and you can't stop. You right. have this burst of energy or you're reading and you, you start reading and you like, I gotta finish this book mm -hmm. or you're working or you're doing something and it's like some people people ask me how long it takes to write the book. Mm -hmm. I say well, it depends on um, it depends on um, <laughs> what I'm what 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 I'll tell you <laughs> in that it took me five years to write it took me five years to write um, um, two pages and then I wrote yep. 22,000 words in yep. three days yep. and so where does that come from what well, is the inspiration yep. so if you're inspired mm -hmm. to do something I've seen many by force by force too <laughs> okay. you got a deadline right. <laughs> you know I mean? by force so this, or inspiration yeah this thing right. about inspiration this how we how can we get inspired and we put this inspiration inside of us to study to yep. do better to do anything that we want to do in life and I think that's important Mm -hmm. So how can people get in touch with you and get more information about your book? Uh, I, have a, I have a website, drkendrickscott.com. They can go to my website. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just Google Dr. Kendrick Scott. They can 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm out in the community, so you can you can um, personal message me, and you can go to all my social media accounts, and you can find me anywhere on online. Yes. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, share with the public today, just to to, to uplift sure. their their thoughts and ideas? Yeah, um, there there's a lot I can share, but in, in a couple of minutes, I, I, the one thing I would like to share is that. Whatever situation that anyone is in, whatever you want to do, you can move from one place to another, to another. Your past does not equal your future. Amen. That that's one of my, and I have a video out there that that talks about that. That your past does not equal your future. Mm -hmm. That that people think that your position. The one thing I tell people now is that your position that you're in is not your potential. People think that their position is their potential, so they never do anything in their position to move out, move out of that because they think that that's their potential. I was working on, on a job once, and I, didn't, I wasn't getting paid as what I thought I should be paid, but I knew that that wasn't my potential, mm -hmm. that just because I was in that particular position, that my potential was something different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, Tyler Perry was once sleeping in his car. That was that's his right. position. That was not his potential. That's right. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart was homeless. That was his position. Mm -hmm. That was not his potential. Mm -hmm. Oprah, Oprah Winfrey was molested as a child. That was her position. Mm -hmm. That was not her potential. Mm -hmm. Potential was to be a, a mogul, one of the richest women that ever lived. So if you can understand that, that your position is never equals your potential, but everything around you, everyone will tell you that your position equals your potential. And you'll have that thought. You'll have that idea. You'll go home. You'll cry. You'll, you know, you'll have these, 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 these demons of distractions that'll mm -hmm. tell you that your position is your potential. So if that's the one thing that I can tell people, that I think that has helped many people to understand that where you are is not where you can be in life. So if you Amen. understand that alone, that will take you to places that, 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 that unbelievable places that, that I think it was Thoreau who said that um, if you endeavor to live the life that you once imagined, that you will have success in uncommon hours, that you just have that endeavor, that, that inspiration, allow that to, to, um, to manifest inside of you and to understand that you can move from your place in life to somewhere you want to be. Love it. Amen. Your Solid right. words. Your Thank you for sharing is that. not your potential. It's not your potential. That's Never. right. Never. Amen. Never. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you've heard some really genuine words from Dr. Kendrick Scott today, whose book is uh, It's All Inside. And please look for him uh, on the internet. Uh, pay a visit to our Facebook page, Uplifting Communities TV Talk Show. And like us, <laughs> friend us, yes. stay in contact with us because we have not only this show, but a lot of amazing shows coming up in the future. Also, I'd like for you to consider being a friend of Access Sacramento. This facility here is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and your donations are fully tax deductible. So please stop by Access Sacramento's uh, web page at accesssacramento.org. Look us up and uh, become a friend of Access Sacramento. So with that, my name is T.D. Trice. I'm Terry A. And I'm John L. Thank you for watching today's program, Uplifting Communities TV Talk Show. And thank you for your time. Community. Community.